into another edition of the original roundtable with Ian Fitzsimmons of ESPN. I'm Lance Taylor from the next round. Make sure you like, subscribe. It's always brought to you by mybookie.ag. Football season's here, winning season's here. When you sign up at mybookie.ag, make sure you put in that promo code next round. You'll grab a welcome bonus on the house from our friends at mybookie.ag. Okay, speaking of friends, um, you know Joey McGuire well. And you've covered this guy for a couple of years. I, I think he's got a great culture. They should be 2-0. and They blew a 17-point lead to Wyoming. And then watching Saturday night, and I came so close to having a big play on Texas Tech. I pulled back last minute, didn't do it. They were catching six and a half. They're up nine going into the fourth quarter. They're outscored 20-3. to three. You got a late uh, turnover, and they took it to the house. And that was just – I don't know what the atmosphere was like. It looked great in the stands. Dude, How quickly did that thing fall apart on you? It was medieval, man. Uh, you know, the tortilla heads in West Texas, they, they get after it, especially for a night game. It, it's, it's a remarkable atmosphere. And I'm with you. Joey Mack, you better get him now. He just had some five-star all-world wide receiver just commit to him today. Um, he, they're, they're, they're getting better and better. And caffeine, as you and I talked about last week, caffeine fears the man. And he doesn't drink caffeine. I mean, he, his energy is just his next level, dude. And you're right. They, they, that was a bad beat. If you if you had Texas Tech, you're uh. catching the seven. You know, uh, you know, Oregon should have taken a knee after that awful. You know, it, it's you know, Tyler Shuck gets hit, rolling to his left, ball pops up. You know, goes right into the lap of you know, I can't remember which Oregon DB got it. I think it was Bridges. Um, and it, instead of just taking just laying down and then taking a knee, what's he do? They took it to the Pounces house. It, and that's a backdoor bad beat uh. cover. Uh, it Texas was, Tech was a better football team, Lance, the yeah, entire Yeah, I thought night. so, too. And I was going to ask you about this because Pac-12 now has eight teams, only the second conference to ever put eight in the top 25. And I've said this going into the Pac-12. I think this could end up being their best year. It looks like it at least early. But when I look at national championship contenders or even playoff contenders, I just I wasn't sold on Dan Lanning's defense in year two. They had 14 penalties Saturday. Uh, Tyler Shuck, if he doesn't turn it over like he did, they definitely win the game. You just wonder once they get to conference play and if Cam Rising's back, um, you've got a lot to deal with with it's USC. Uh, I mean, yeah, Washington is great. Uh, Oregon State, now you look at what Colorado's doing with Dion. I, I mean, did, did, did Oregon strike you as a team that could go 11-1, and one, win a Pac-12 conference, LT, and uh, ultimately be playoff team? When Oregon was coming out of the tunnel, I had a, I had a walk and talk with their head coach, Dan Lanning, and I said – Biggest message to your team at halftime. And I thought he was going to rip my head off because he said self-inflicted wounds, self-inflicted wounds, stupid damn penalties. And he was so glad that we were not live, right? It was just a walk and talk because it got nasty. I mean, and, and you're right. You brought up the 14 penalties. I mean, just at, at, at inopportune times, they got to clean that up, man. Because again, Texas Tech should have won the football game. And we'll, we'll go bigger picture here. because I, I can't wait to get your thoughts on chasing points in the first quarter or even the first half. We'll touch on that in a sec, man, if you don't mind. Yeah, but, absolutely. Dude, That the Pac-12, ironically, right, after it's been just disintegrated, eviscerated, just uh, absolutely embalmed, <laughs> they're done. And they have arguably the deepest, best version of the Pac-12 we've seen in a quarter century. Yeah, That's and then their too last run. And I, I'm with you, man. There's no way, in my opinion, any team out of that conference runs the gauntlet, and they're going to have to in order to make the college football playoff. I just can't believe Larry Scott shit the bed so bad on this television contract because, you know, I, I mean, the, the nostalgia of, you know, the Pac-12 after dark, I just really like the conference. I know a lot of SEC Big Ten fans probably don't care. Uh, the Big Ten's going to get a taste of it, though, with USC Yo, and UCLA. Cal was awesome. We're back in the hotel, man, like 11 o'clock at night. Going, I know. What a game. What a hard-hitting football game. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, again, if if Cal uh, – I don't know how Cal lost that game. I mean, Auburn's offense is awful. We'll get to that in a second. But, again, man, the Pac-12 to go out like this. And in two weeks, we get the outcast game. We've got Washington State hosting Oregon State. And, damn, both those teams are ranked and both those teams are good. And I know you like both of those coaches. Oh, hell yeah, man. I mean, and, and the ADs, too. I mean, Pat Chun of Washington State, I've known since he was in the sports information department at Ohio State. And Jonathan Smith at, at, at 
at Oregon State. He's not Stop. going anywhere, man. He played there. He's loyal to that soil. I mean, this is like his dream job. Yeah, you say that, though, but think about it. But I mean, now how much it, was, it was coming in, yeah. Right. How much are they going to be able to pay him now that he's not in a conference? Depending, okay. Like, if they're left out, if they're Mountain West, there's no way you can continue to pay that guy 4 or $5 million. And if I'm a big-time school, I'm going after it. Oh, look, look, look what he's done with quarterback play, too, man. I mean, not just with DJ Uyunglele, but, I mean, it's, he's just – I mean, he played the position, right, and knows it. And he's not one of those, you know, just in-your-face, bite-your-head-off type coaches. He's more of a firm, encouraging type guy. I had him a couple of years ago at Utah, and I could not have been more impressed, LT, to your point. Uh, but then you have – again, and let's go back to that. And this, is, this isn't just about Texas Tech, Oregon. This is football, whether it's Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee. I don't care who it is, right? The moment that Joey Mack – went for two down 15 13 and chased points because oregon went for two and got it kelly stoffer who played for the seattle seahawks you remember him many years ago he's our color analyst i thought he was going to spontaneously combust and i went I, right I don't there get with it him. and you know what right, so let me ask you in yeah. that situation right do you kick the extra point and you're down 1 15 14 or are you looking at the analytics sheet that tells you Oh, looky here. You're down at this point. You need to go for two. Or are you feeling the momentum of the game? What would you have done? I would have I would have definitely kicked the extra point. I, I'm not even looking at going for two. And, and, and unless it's premiums or uh points that are a premium, which they weren't, you knew you were going to be able to score on Oregon. And if it's not like in the fourth quarter, I'm not doing it. I just I I'm with I'm you a thousand you. percent. I'm totally against chasing points. And so now why? if you want the and, mindset of I'm not I'm not dressing a kicker. And I'm going to go for two every single time, regardless. I haven't seen anybody do that. But if you want to go with that philosophy, I buy more into that than chasing points. Yeah, we had the high school coach in Arkansas, right? He ended up at Presbyterian. Yeah. He got fired at Presbyterian, but he never punted. You know, he's, as he said, he got four downs for a reason. Well, that works in high school ball, but not in college. I, I could not agree with you more, Lance. I don't get – analytics – you know what? We sound like two old dudes that are 51, right? I mean yeah, – we, we are. <laughs> banged up, beaten to death, right? Take a milk thistle and like apple cider vinegar to hang on for dear Sad. life. AG1 in the morning, you know? I mean, it's, it's, we're hanging on, LT. We're hanging on, dude. You'd be impressed, though. I make it till about 3 a.m. every Sunday morning and then get up and watch again. Oh, yeah. We didn't we didn't do our post game until after Cal Auburn, so we didn't go live till a little after 1 o'clock. And we went till after 2. And how, I mean, like, how does that housed. sound? Can I get audio? Oh, hey, so last year it became – the first time we did it was last year. We'll get and back so, to analytics in a second. I yeah, got to the, 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 the Club LT last year, we would always have a guest singer. So it's me sitting there, and people are just all over the place drinking and cussing. And, and so they're trying to do a serious show, and it became kind of a running joke because I'd, sometimes I'd be laid out on the, on the ground, which I was this past Saturday night because, you know, I started drinking Stella's at like noon – and then I started drinking <laughs> chicken cock whiskey at 6 p.m. And, you know, you drink that for seven hours on top of a bunch of beers. And then I popped my first edible right when we went live at 1 o'clock. Dude, that combo would drop a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, much less a human. I oh, swear, did you man. did you hear about our bet a couple of weeks ago? So no, we hang on. I swear okay. I want to cut you and Trip Rogers open. Trip Rogers, owner of the Industry Irish Pub. I don't think you two guys are human. I really don't. Yeah, I know Tripp's not. No, he's a cyborg. I mean, it, it, there's there's metal in there. There's zero blood, nothing. I mean, that's, so, that's that, he, he's just different. But go ahead. What, what, what was well, your we tried to do creative bets, and so we were at Florida Bama doing the show like three weeks ago. It was the week before Alabama Middle Tennessee State, and we were talking about a number of completions for the, com the combination of Alabama quarterbacks. And I said, look, I guarantee you it was 10 a.m., because we had started the show at 9. It was 10 a.m. I said, I bet I can drink more drinks today at the floor Bama than Alabama will have completions. And so Dunaway took the bet. Oh, he lost. Oh, he lost. He got smashed. Look, look, look at the look. Oh, oh did he lose? <laughs> he got, he got yeah. chicken kicked. <laughs> I, I had – girlfriend cut me off at uh, – you don't even want to know the number at like 2 a.m. And I was like, I've, I've got at least five more in me. But she she cut me I mean, off. I haven't seen two a.m. and unless I'm waking up for the, to do the morning show on ESPN and ESPN two, uh, it's a wake up call. That's that's not that's not going to bed. 
I can't, I can't do it anymore. I, I marvel at you, man. I really do. I'm proud of you, son. Yeah, let me see I mean, what... I never, uh, I, if I could hug you right now, I would. So, Bo Nix wouldn't have beat me this past week, by the way. No. Uh, yeah, well, wow. I'm just, but, I'm just saying it was a ridiculous... Um, but it was hell. I've been losing all these stakes. I used to win them all the time from Dunaway. So I needed to get one back. So I was not going to lose that. one. That was a guaranteed, like you're, you're playing poker and you'd already seen his hand, right? I mean, that, yeah. that, that one, that one you had locked stock in it and in the, in the books. So I was, was going to save this for, for last, by the way, this is the original round table with uh, ESPN's Ian Fitzsimmons. I'm Lance Taylor. Like subscribe, tell your friends we are back. I bring Ian on once a week. And it's brought to you by mybookie.ag. Again, put in that promo code next round. Grab that welcome bonus from our friends at mybookie.ag. So this is a genius promotion. There is a place called Jack's American Pub in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Have you heard about this? No, far away. I want to finish our thoughts and analytics at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I can wait. Um, so Jack's American <laughs> Pub, they said, uh, now that Aaron Rodgers is quarterback in the Jets, for every game Aaron Rodgers starts – if the Jets lose, they buy everyone's drinks in the bar. So four plays in last night, Aaron Rodgers starts. He goes down. The bar starts buying and buying and buying. And, like, management and the owner are like, holy shit, we're about to get jammed Bad with this. Beat. And so they continued. And the people stayed all night just partying and partying and partying. And then you get the punt return at the end. And manager's like, well, yeah, we like this promotion. It was only one week because now he ain't going to start another game. Um, but, boy, can you imagine being – I would have been buying everything. Unbelievable. And then, and then Gibson houses it. By the way, how about that story, man? Yeah, that's a great story. This, it, 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 so he went to Woodrow Wilson High School. That's where my daughters go. And a great kid. He was committed to SMU as a corner. Stephen F. Austin offers him as a wide receiver and a returner. So he goes to Stephen F. Austin, betting on himself, ends up all Southland as a freshman, all Southland Conference as a sophomore. Then they get into the WAC. He's the WAC Offensive Player of the Year, junior and senior year, kind of off the radar, undrafted free agent. You probably, some people may have seen the story on Hard Knocks, yeah. but he is a remarkable young man i mean still comes back to woodrow you know to, and, and woodrow wilson by the way one of two high schools and in, in the entire country with multiple heisman winners davy o'brien and tim brown and tim wow. brown kind of mentored gibson so tim brown's coming on our show tonight uh here on on a tuesday night on espn radio man just to talk about gibson what are, i mean can, you, you can't it's like a hollywood script lt yeah. your first nfl game and you house it in OT, hey, and if you're Jack's your American Pub, that's Monday that's your, Night Football. You can't if you're Jack's that American up, Pub, that, that's your that's your new favorite player, by the way, because he saved them thousands and thousands right. of dollars last night. Right. Yeah, and so, if you're a Jets fan and you bet on the Jets because AR was starting, you're you're thinking you're going to the bookie on a Tuesday. You're not visiting on a Wednesday to collect, right? And that dude houses it for you, and you cash a ticket at the window. Come on, man. You, by you the way. Up. Lance'sLock.com. I was on the Jets plus two and a half. Lance'sLock.com. You love jump on, Gibson. Proud jump of Jump on Wilson. board. Hey, I thought I thought it was done. I was still in the car. We did a, a Bud Light promotion last night. I was driving home, and I had the game on for the first series, and I was almost in the neighborhood, and he goes down, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, there is no way. Like, I knew the defense was going to be lights out. They were last year. Yep. But there's no way against Buffalo that Zach Wilson's going to be able to come in and win this game. Look, I know you're a fan – of wherever Devin's coaching, which is the Carolina Panthers this year. Um, and rough, rough first outing for Bryce Young. But, and I know this isn't an NFL show, but I, I know you follow that There was that no segue team. there. That was just a shot at me, but go ahead. No, and I know you follow that team because your little bro is, the, is yep. one of the assistant coaches there. But if you're a Jets fan, man, they haven't won a Super Bowl since 69, and you had everything, you know, just, I mean, lined up perfectly. And Aaron Rodgers goes down in the first series. I mean, how jinxed is that organization? Oh, dude, it, it's insane. So now you're riding with Zach Wilson, who, in one word last year, one word, the word no, he lost an entire team. When he was posed the question, did did your offense, did you all let the defense down? He had like they had like 60 yards of total offense, right? Yeah. Remember that? He gets no. Oh, yeah. Walked off the podium. Goodbye, kid. You're out. And I'll tell you what, they were smart to hang on to him. Because now there's talent there. He's just, oh yeah. 
I mean, he just seems like an entitled little you know what, man. Yeah. I know I can say the word, but I'm not going to. But I mean, he just, you know, it, 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 it and then being around Aaron Rodgers in the offseason as much as he was, you, I mean, you, you saw a lot, including Garrett Wilson, you saw a lot of players. By the way, how about that catch from Wilson? Uh, you know? Dude, he is. Uh, I, I, so we have, I know you don't play fantasy. But hold on, but real quick, Wilson's okay. back in, I mean, Garrett Wilson's back in Zach, right? Going, hey, he's our guy, blah, blah, blah. So, they may have been smart, right, to, to actually hang on to the guy instead of getting him out of the room that he lost in one word. Now, go ahead. Okay, now I'm going to pull it back. I was just going to tell you I was going to brag on myself. Now it's going to bite me in the ass because Aaron Rodgers is no it. longer around. But I took Garrett Wilson in our fantasy draft in the first round. I think number seven overall. Maybe. I just thought he was going to have a massive season, and he probably would have. Still can. I mean, again, the talent's there. It's just those those moments, like the one like the, the ball he threw to Milano. I mean, my God, oh. color flashes away so far in advance. How are you making that throw? Yeah. But anyway, but I mean, look, it's not – everyone's saying the season's over for the Jets. I don't think it is because of Brees Hall, because of all that talent outside, because of that defense. The problem is that offensive line, which got Aaron Rodgers hurt, along with the freaking field turf, man. I can tell you right now, LT, that stuff hurts. So, like, at Texas Tech, it's field Yeah, turf. I mean, you're on the field every week, and there is I a think, massive difference between natural and what you get with the artificial. I can't I can't describe this to to the degree that, that it deserves, Lance. So, when I'm doing a game on field turf, I'll pop three or four Advil before, before I get there. Are you kidding? No, because my lower back is killing me by the end of the game. Natural – I've got Tennessee, Florida this week. Natural grass. I'm good. I'm walking around down there for eight hours, and I'm fine. It doesn't bother me one bit. Field turf? Hell yeah. That's concrete underneath that stuff, man. And I know it's padded about six to eight inches. It doesn't matter. It, I mean, you feel the difference. And all, all I'm doing is walking my fat butt around the field for seven or eight hours. Imagine running out there and trying, trying to cut and whatnot. I mean, it's just – and here's the thing. Think about this. The World Cup's coming here. Every venue that has field turf, you know what they're having to do? Oh, to install grass, games? yeah. So they'll do it for that, right? But they're not going to do it in the NFL or in major college football. We're all we scream about is player, player safety, safety, player safety, concussions. We're getting rid of uh, kickoffs. And, you know, Roger Goodell, by the way, in back channels, is already trying to get owners behind him to get rid of the punt. The punt's one of the most important plays oh, in football. God. You block a punt. You house a punt. Look at last, last night. Last night. Yeah. Look at last night. And you trying to get rid of that? Are you, oh, please, are you please kidding me? Tell me that's not Player safety, but guess what? That field turf? Hypocritical, man. guys' jobs. Hypocritical. And careers. And okay. We're good. Wait, we're all about player safety, Lance. Man, my big, fat, hairy butt. You know where natural grass is, Bryant Denny Stadium. Alabama did not play well on it, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, I remember being in Atlanta when Georgia started getting really good under Kirby Smart, and those Georgia fans were intolerable. I think all fan bases are like that, but you're right there in Texas. You're in the heart of Texas and Dallas. Um, how over the top have Texas fans been after that win? Uh, orgasmic. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, the most impressive part, like the fans are going crazy, right? I mean, and, you know, Quinn Ewers played his butt off. That, that D-line. You want to talk about where this game was decided? It wasn't with Quinn yours, right? It wasn't with Xavier Worthy or anything. It, it, it was the defensive front for the Texas Longhorns and Jalen yeah. Ford and linebacker. Those dudes against that line, one of the best in college football, that they, they imposed their will on the road. That to me was the most impressive thing. And then after the game, when you know Quinn yours. He didn't take the bait from Holly Rowe, and it was a very good open-ended question, and you were waiting on, yeah, hey, we're back. Didn't give it. Now we, like, we're back next week with another game. Everybody in that locker room, it was, it was as if Sark, Kyle Flood, A.J. Milley, all those, Jeff Banks, all those former Alabama coaches, right, that are now at Texas, it was that, that, like they had them brainwashed. Not if you win. When you win the game, don't eat the damn cheese. Don't, don't go get that carrot like a little bunny, you know, that they're going to dangle in front of you. Don't go talking about how we're back. We're on to next week. That's yeah. it. And every one of them, Lance, said the right thing, and that resonated into the fan base. It was beyond impressive. Well, look, it looks like a throwback Texas team. And back to that defensive line, you know, we've got an NIL deal with Tyler Booker. 
one of that uh, one of those offensive linemen you were talking about from Alabama, and we had him on the show today. And I asked him, I said, you know, you've only played a year now in two games, but is that the best defensive line you've ever gone against? And he said, yeah. He said because typically when you rotate out, wow. a lesser player will come in. He's like, damn, they've got they got talent everywhere. He said yeah. they're elite. Yeah, they, dude, they are. They're good. You know, yeah, and, 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 and their schedule. Year. Yeah, Sark last year and Kyle Flood told me we're a year away. We're one year away because, you know, that that great offensive line class that they recruited, one of the best offensive line classes maybe in the last 25 years in college football, where they were calves, right? Now their guys dropped. Now they're longhorns. I mean, and, and it, you know, they added some, some you know, ha- hawks, some some of those ham hawks to their haunches, and they got after it, man. And you're right. They, they have the depth, and, and they're good. They play with an attitude too, man. They don't, they don't want to beat you. They want to hurt you. And, I, and now I can't wait to watch – what Bama does because the message that I was expecting to hear from Saban wasn't what we got. It was more, it was very positive. You know, the whole, I'll be shocked if we don't bounce back from this. We haven't seen that, that part before. It's always been tough love. So obviously Saban's going with a different mental approach to his guys with a message through the media that he does about as well as anybody, if not better than anybody. And I am beyond fascinated to see how this team reacts. Yeah, I am too. Again, on one more point on Texas, that schedule really opens up. We had Joel Clyde on yesterday, and he was talking about easiest schedules in football to get to a college football playoff, Georgia, and also now Texas. They don't leave the state of Texas. That's, it's they amazing. Like, they go to Ames. Yeah. They only leave one time. And, you know, Alabama, the thing I would say is watching the rest of the SEC West, and I've seen every team play a little bit through two weeks, Um Every team's got a flaw in the SEC West. I mean, think about it. Your three favorites, Alabama and LSU, your obvious favorites, are both one and one. And now Texas A&M goes to Coral Gables and gets destroyed. What was that, dude? That was all. up, and then you, you do what Aggie does. Yep. Aggie, Aggie, right? I mean, you can't make that one up, dude. I mean, well, That you, was one of those games where one team is going to walk away from it going, hell yeah, we're on the right track. Let's go. Let's go. Can we play tomorrow? And the other team's going to be going, son of a, here we go again. And it happens to be Aggie doing what Aggie does. Can't make it up. The original roundtable with ESPN's Ian Fitzsimmons. I'm Lance Taylor. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's brought to you by Lance'sLock.com. Jump on board. We will win for you. Coming off a win with a backup quarterback in in Zach uh, Thomas last night. Not Zach Thomas. What am I saying? You got Texas Tech on the brain, bro. Zach I do. My <laughs> gosh. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. <laughs> Complete meltdown right there. But, yes, uh, Lance'sLock.com. Make sure you jump on board for that. Uh, speaking of jinxes, you actually, 6 o'clock Saturday night, you'll be in the swamp. Uh, Tennessee's got a case of swamp ass. They can't win there. They haven't won there since 2003. Uh, Tennessee's six-and-a-half-point favorite. We haven't seen Joe Milton play like you saw Hendon Hooker play last year. Everybody talks about the kid is super athletic. He's got maybe the yeah. best arm in all of football. We haven't seen it come together yet. Um, this is an interesting spot for Billy Napier. They look so bad in week one. I don't know what you get out of McNeese State. But how do you see this game playing out? And what what, what is the major storyline for you? Well, the number one, man, is that number is low, right? And it's almost like that Vegas is begging you to take Tennessee because they have the number next to them and everyone's thinking about last year. I don't know if you agree with that or not, LT. Oh, yeah. I mean, cappers, I know. So uh, six yeah, and a half, people seven. are going to be all over Tennessee. What's that? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. and and I uh, I think that number they're almost begging you, you know, to take the balls. And by the way, man, Vegas got hurt last week. Their number one here, please take this side, was Colorado. Buddy of mine at Caesars uh, told me Lance that they wrote more tickets, and this was on Friday night. They had written more tickets on Colorado than the NFL slate, the morning slate combined. And normally, and he'll probably tell you this, the NFL handles like 10 times what you get with a college handle. That, I made the never mistake. They moved the number off three, man. So when I know. They, I, they don't, they'll, they'll I, pl- I, pl- I played Nebraska like a dumbass. I did too. Yeah. I did too. And they, look, man, be why? Because you and I are contrarians. Right. And when they dangle that number out there, seven out of 10 times they're going to win. Now, this is one of the three that, you know what? They got burned. I think Tennessee, Florida, not near the degree of Nebraska, Colorado. I mean, that was a big, full on begging and pleading you to take the buffs and they got burned and burned badly right like they like, like jumped in the inner rings of dante's inferno bad <laughs> now i think they're, they're, they're kind of begging you right now to take tennessee and be careful folks you know because 
I'm not a Graham Mertz guy, but when it, Vegas doesn't lose many games like that, you know, back to back weeks. And I think that's the one on a weak slate this week. This is one of those oh. weeks, Lance, where go change the baby's diaper, right? Cut the grass, do whatever you've got to do. Uh, because next week, I think we've got, I'm going off the top of my head here, seven top 25 matchups. Yeah. And that's not including Woo. Florida State and Clemson, right? Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. So at least six by next week, probably. I'm just, seven. I'm pissed like i didn't go to tuscaloosa this past weekend because there were good games on i wanted to watch cal and auburn afterwards i wanted to watch usc and stanford so i stayed home now uh i've got an opportunity to go to folsom field in boulder in in three weeks to check out usc in colorado and i don't know if i'm going to because there's other good games why can't this be a weekend where i have an opportunity to go to one game that's really good i can't help you coach but really you've can. actually got one of the best games out there. I mean, I you know, that's where Fowler and Herbie are going. I was shocked to see that, man. Wow. Man, that, you know, and look, it's a great rivalry. I mean, we all go back. You and I remember, and there, there's a younger audience right now that may not just go Google Steve Spurrier trash talking Tennessee. It is absolute vintage and it's classic. You can't spell citrus bowl without UT. <laughs> um, Peyton Manning uh, gonna be the MVP again. I mean, yeah, they, these two fan bases despise one another. So that's one aspect that I'm pumped to go and, and, and get a little taste of because I love some hatred in my sports. And this is pure sports hate. Yeah, and look, and going back to the 90s, those those matchups you're talking about, that was the regular season game of the year because whoever won that game, and it was always Florida until they didn't, was on to the SEC championship game and then you know an opportunity to maybe win a national championship. Those were great regular season matchups back in the day. Oh, hell yeah. And so – I give I give Florida a puncher's chance here, man. I really do. Uh, I got to talk to Ricky Pearsall tomorrow morning, and you know when you when you when you're taping an interview, you, you half of it goes live, and the other the other half is the good stuff, right? And I'm curious to see, you know, how this squad feels after playing that Utah defense out in that altitude. Where I, mean, I tell you what, I mean, you see us escaping, right? Utah escapes oh. Baylor in what in, in 128 heat index. That was the field temp. I mean, we had 129. And, and Utah's offense, well, both offenses were awful. Oh, uh, the, dude, the highlight of the game was Baylor's Baylor's uniform. What is going on with Cam Rising? Are we going to see him yeah, anytime yeah. soon? UCLA. Uh, I okay. mean, he, he might get his feet wet against Weber State this week, but and I've got we just got our assignment. I've got UCLA at Utah. I can't nice. wait. I can't wait for this one, man. Oh, no, man. And you got, I mean, Dante Moore watching him, he's the real deal as a yeah, true freshman dude. for Chip Kelly. That's a good team. Hell yeah. They may not have a first round pick, but they're gonna have a lot of guys drafted. That yeah. makes sense. They're yeah. a talented team. So I, I can't wait to watch that when the rice echoes, which also gets just absolutely insane, especially, you know, in a later kick. I think it's gonna be a 130 afternoon kick on Fox. Uh, you know, but tune in to us on ESPN Radio, please. Appreciate that. But yeah, I I'm I'm pumped for it, man. But going back to Florida, that that's about as good a defense as they're gonna face until Georgia. Yeah. The cocktail party. So they got battle tested, so that, that's why again another reason why I kind of, you know, I can't make a pick on the game, but I think you know where I would, I would be leaning if I could. Yeah, uh, the original roundtable with the ESPN's Ian Fitzsimmons. I'm Lance Taylor. Like, subscribe. Our good buddy uh, Charlie Vitella of Petrocelli's fame. My guy, Michigan, I saw, go blue. Had a beer with him last night. He was asking about you. He said he's really enjoying this. He's talked to a lot of people that you know listened to us a decade plus ago. So, uh, again, if you like the original roundtable, like, subscribe. We would appreciate that. Before I let you run, and, again, this is always brought to you by mybookie.ag. That's where you can get on and uh, sign up. You get uh, put the promo code next round in. You're going to get that welcome bonus on the house from mybookie.ag. You brought up Colorado. Uh, before the season started, you said if Dion wins four games, he should be your national coach of the year. He's halfway there. And we doubted him this weekend. This week. Colorado State. Yeah, it's yeah, they are. This is three, and then it starts getting really difficult. I think they find six wins. I don't think they're as good as they're being billed right now. I agree. But let me ask you: it, 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 you like Dion? I like Dion. I like how different he is. I like how confident he is. But the first couple of wins, it's gotten kind of deflected. Not necessarily about Colorado. It's about other exterior things. You know, this last week it was about Nebraska disrespecting us. You know, week one, it was nobody believed I could do this. Um, is this act going to grow tired? 
not to those players that won't, not to that fan base that won't. I mean, every hotel, my daughter Rowan went out to an ID camp out there because uh, you know, she's a pretty damn good goalkeeper right now and going into her senior year. And they were just, you know, she's kind of looking at Colorado and, and, and different places. She wants to get out of Texas and the deep south uh, and just go see a different part of the country. So she, Colorado, she, yeah, I'll, go, I'll go take a look. Dude, this is in June. Every hotel was sold out for the entire home slate. Every home football game sold out. Every hotel. Oh, they've already made it. They've already made their money on Dion. Dude, I mean, that wasn't happening for the last 20 years. That hasn't happened. The, you know, their spring game sold out. It's all because of Dion. So I don't give you might get tired of it. I might get tired of it. You know, America might get tired of it. They're tired of Nick Saban. They're now getting tired of Georgia. I mean, come on. You know, it's they're tired of the Yankees, the Cowboys. But those fan bases aren't. I get it. I just wish it was more about, hey, look, hey, you I'm know, telling it's, a, you, Lance, it's about our players. This is, and but he deflects to his players. He does. You know, that's why he's, he's, he's putting Travis Hunter out there and his son Sanders and Edwards, who's a, a remarkable dynamic running back, you know, and Weaver, a wide out. He, he's, he's talking about all these guys and he's yeah. coaching them hard, Lance. You talk to anybody who's been out there, you know, Joel Clott, you ask him, he is coaching these dudes with an old school, 80s and 90s mentality but it's all flash in front of the cameras behind closed doors it's do it my way or else and they're oh, buying hey, I, in all, i mean they are all, they didn't dip their toes into the shallow end they jumped into the deep end of that pool dude it's impressive it yeah, is look, and i was wrong yeah, look the defense went about it went against one of the worst offenses in football yes. this past week against nebraska but i thought charles kelly did a good job Obviously, Sean Lewis, the offense coordinator, was a great pickup for Deion Sanders. And he, no you know, they're well coached. There's no doubt. Oh, I mean, it, it's, it's, again, I was wrong. I thought it'd take two, three years to become a 10 win type team. It, it, look, man, he might get to seven this year, which is remarkable. And next year, watch the hell out in the Big 12. I mean, seriously, the way he's recruiting, you know, the way he hits the portal. Amen. By the way, I'm going to leave you on this. No, we got to wrap up. We're up against it. You ever had to meet sweats the next morning from a, a meal you ate the night before? No, no, no. We went to Kegel's Steakhouse and Barbecue on Friday night and outside of Lubbock, Texas. One, this place is unbelievable. Get down in a three-point stance and fire off an attack. I mean, it is damn. I mean, remarkable. And the scenery in West Texas is also, I mean, it's, it's underrated. You got some sleep really? at the portal. Okay. I mean, but I mean, when I say our entire crew, had more brisket, sausage, ribeyes, you name it. The next morning, across from our hotel was a little joint called the Pancake House. Been here since like 1912. Well, hell, Lance, you, you got to go, right? You got to go, yeah. All right, so it's 8 a.m. <laughs> and I sent a text to our whole crew, Pancake House, it was a unanimous hell no. Still full. Are you out of your damn mind? What's Did you wrong go though? With you? And I'm still, I mean, I'm still like sweating. I'm embarrassed, but I wanted to go. So I went over. I had one sausage patty, their homemade sausage right there. I had one sausage patty, one egg, one pancake, which I ate half of. And that's all I could get in, man. But I had to go try it because this is, we, I, our entire crew still had the damn meat, like Thanksgiving dinner meat sweats. The next morning. Yeah, I know you don't get after it like we used to. Can't. Gainesville, to me, was always an overrated town. I think I've been to three or four game weekends there, and I just, I Does just the don't like it. Purple Corp is still open? And that was yeah, one of I, our joints back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I used to go there every time I was in town because they, they used to have the – dragged uh, this, me there once. I hated pre, it for it. Pre-9-11, remember, they would let you leave the stadium. People would run to the Purple Porpoise. They'd get a drink and come back in the stadium. Can't do that anymore. But I was going to ask you, um, what is one of the more underrated college towns? Is Lubbock one of those? Yeah, they go harder than the average bear. And uh, like I said, man, the talent, I mean, it's its its extraordinarily underrated. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun, man. That, 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 that one is way, way up there as far as you wouldn't really think that that would be a fun place to go. Uh, but, you know, I, I did a game there back in 19, pre-COVID. And it, it's, man, whatever you want, you got. You can find it. Uh, this is the original roundtable. Disrupt the media. Make sure you like, Charlie. subscribe. Go blue, baby. That is Ian Fitzsimmons. Hey, safe travels uh, to the swamp. If you're out and about, listen. ESPN Radio, 6 o'clock Saturday night, Central Time.
Who's on the crew with you? Kelly Stouffer? Kelly Stouffer, yeah, former Seattle Seahawk quarterback. Uh, Mark Kestisher, my sorry, bud, man. We'll get after it. Maybe a little Gav can call a few plays for uh, for Florida to get that a little offense. Little Gav. We, we will bring back little Gav at some point for people that have never that heard the story. One. It was maybe – well, it was. It was one of the top five trash on the table stories of all time. But oh, we'll revisit Without that. a doubt. Okay, brother. Safe travels. That little bastard knows football. CLT. <laughs> <laughs>